you like they do in other aspects of their lives to be able to track progress on where they're contacting with the council. So they're not going to ring up again and say, you know, I put this claim in or whatever. Two weeks ago, where is it up to? Because a clear track until within a new system will allow us to be able to update that and provide that information. A fully integrated payment system, so you make, make a payment and that payment goes right through without any need for any manual staff intervention. An integrated mapping tool that will support when you're looking at street scene areas so that you can actually pinpoint really clearly where the particular issue is. So we'll link up with and integrate with other systems. I think the main thing, and the word that I've used quite a few times, is integration. Often we've developed systems, as you know, that have been quite glossy sometimes on the front end of the service. We haven't integrated all the way through to the back office. So that actually our efficiencies haven't been maximised. We still have to have staff processing the end part of the service, which isn't efficient for them. It's not efficient for yourselves, and it's doesn't make the system truly do what a new system could do. So we need to ensure that any system that we go forward, any process that we go forward, does that key. It integrates into all the back office systems that we really need it to. Revenues and benefits, as you know, you know, are most complex area, you know, certainly in, in the field that I'm more familiar with, with one-stop shops, is our most, as I've just said, the most complex area. We need this system to integrate right through so that we're not just doing part of it and then generating further work for others and that it's a clear support for the revenues and benefits. It has been good, as the RN that we've got for Street C. A new system can be far, far better, far more integrated, but more crucially, it can deliver what you as members um, need it to do. And so very clearly the next steps on this are that you work with us um, to, do it, to decide what we want from the system, that it's not Wendy and our team, you know, deciding how, how you want it to look, that you, that you work with us and to help us scope what that, what that system could look like to help you as you deal with the constituents. So that's our next step, and um, I'll be open to take any questions. Christina, Tracy, Chris. That's cool. I don't quite follow what you're saying because I thought changes had already been made because you can't use the CRM anymore. Well, at least you can now. Um, and we have this bizarre system of tick boxing. Life's not about tick boxes, I don't think. Anyway, it's I don't think that every single problem we get fits a tick box. Um, you say there's going to be consultation. I was never consulted uh, about what I wanted. But I got this um, message from on high that I am not allowed to speak to officers anymore, I have to do it through the system, not through CRMs, um, like I'm some sort of child, um, which I didn't really like very much. Um, it struck me as a little bit heavy handed, which often in my mind aligns with people who think, realise they've made a mistake somewhere along the line and are trying to cover it up somewhere or decide they don't want to know about what the rest of us think. Right, this new system that we're supposed to use, what difference has that made? We understand it has to, it has to save money, but why does putting things in tick boxes necessarily have to be the answer? We appreciate money's got to be saved, I'm sure all of us are doing it, but I can't understand why nobody asked us as ordinary councillors how we felt it was going to work. You then talk about volunteer community and faith groups, well, from my perspective, and I'm very involved with the voluntary community and faith groups in Bevington, where I'm a councillor, they can't use the new system. So I've got three times more of a workload, and I'm not going to use it. So it, it requires me speaking to more people. Christine, have got a question? Right, I'm asking, what the question is, is why are we listening to something about a new system when we've already got this bizarre system in place? Yeah, it's okay if you can ask a few more, then I'll have to do it. So, can I just say, Chris, I'd look at the new, um, the 
from the new, the new uh, system that's going in place, it's coming out of October the 6th, I think it's going live, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The new yeah, website. Yeah, website. Has anybody else seen it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that will help an awful lot, the way it's been written, the way it's going to be used, to enable people to find what they were looking for with this moving towards this. Everything's moving towards IT. I do, I do a surgery in the library and I'm forever spending my time shit on a computer with somebody who can't find this certain thing or how do you find this, how do you find it. This new website front end has been built with the idea that anybody going to it is not there for the news or what's going on in World Council. It's going there for a specific purpose like I want to pay my council tax or I want to get my bin emptied or whatever. That single tax task is available to look at on the front screen. My only comments about that is, although the front bit looks great, my comments about that is, currently, um, if you go on the system that we have now, you put in, I've done it loads of times, I'm sure most people have done it, uh, it tells me things like the new Chester Road doesn't exist, because I've spelled it with a capital M, not a capital C, but we may have two words instead of one word. Right? So my biggest concern about the money that we spent and the time and effort to come into this new system is the one thing that would solve that issue is not being paid for. I think it's a cost of seven grand, and that's the new uh, the word now, the new uh, the way of looking things up on the web. Uh, mine's gone totally blank now. Uh, Sir, thank you. New search engine. So we're not paying for the new search engine. We're going to use the new slides that we've got, which is not the best. So although we're saving money in one way, we're actually going to cost more grief than another. Um, but regardless of that, we'll take that back to the web team. Right. And keep them, uh, and the other thing is, I was just going to say, CRM, everybody keeps banging the CRM business about customer relationship management. I have managed to put in four requests on one pot of it, which you're not supposed to be able to do. Four different times. It's been fixed three times. It's still outstanding, and I've got four CRM numbers and two relationship numbers. So what I'm saying to it is, as a CRM system, it's not relationship management because all it's doing is firing off a bog standard email saying, we'll look at it in 15 days. I still have one on that pot of outstanding for 15 days. And that was done two months ago. So the whole thing needs to be done. I'm going to let Wendy answer if that's okay. A couple of points around council.net. Yes. Um, Wendy, systems are the problem. It's the processes that you, you adopt. We need to figure out what process yeah, you want absolutely. before you go out and find a package that may or may not suit it. And that's why it's not an IT solution. No, it's not. It's a business. It's a business design. case. 
with in partnership with and all these people here well. should be involved in, in detail okay, what so they yeah, want yeah, is that yeah. yeah. can I just ask am I the person who's going mad here we have, we've been told we can't use the CRMs anymore and we've got this new system am I, am I the only person who's been told that no, when you say can't use the CRMs um, you can't use CRMs. the old go through to street you mean Right. We've got to use this new stupid system that takes oh, forever. Comes no, Street You've reopened it only because the number of us said, decided we weren't going to live in Alice in Wonderland land, and said, this is ludicrous. And what we're doing is while it's So we can go back to just going to Street Is that correct? Is that correct? And can you tell us then how do we put in social services now? Referrals to social services. Social services and that being in our That's right. So you, so you still set it. Can I just make a suggestion that maybe you keep us informed and progress rather than trying to have out every single month of tonight? I think the offer was made to elect yeah. yeah. the yeah. 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 work with, with yes. the officers. Uh, I thought we had an IT working team, but we did many moves ago. I mean, clearly, we got met with them. But my, my concern isn't about elected members, frankly. It's elected members will always find a route through a system, we're good at that sort of thing, and, and, and we will deal with it. But my, my thing is that the, this report hasn't got any customer feedback in it of what the actual punters out there are, are facing day to day. And I'm more interested in, in, in the reaction of that. Perhaps we can have something for, in a future report about how your public it, it is, is dealing with it and, and fighting the system. And we, we, we've all been for a year, to be honest. No, I haven't seen any of our election leaflets saying, let's go out and spend more money on IT. I haven't seen any of your leaflets or, or, or mine or anyone else's. We don't go campaigning for extra IT spend, so we get, we get what we deserve sometimes. Uh, I'll just keep this, I'll just, oh right, we have to keep this brief because there's people that have come in, yes, that you've jumped ahead of. Okay, so we've got Tracy, then Brian, then Paul, then Adam, and then Leo. But I think we need to wrap it right up after that goes. Thanks, Chair. I just wanted to say that um, I'd be um, really interested in getting involved to see uh, from council's point of view and from a uh, resident's point of view. And can I just ask, on the online customer account with the autofill, is it going to be a personal or, or address based? You know, the new the key deliverables? I'd like to say, well. It would be personal. Personal, yeah, because it's been a trust based on that. Thank you. Thanks very much, Timothy. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, I was just having to think about maybe this should go on the work programme rather than uh, we could add this to the work programme. Yes. Yeah, because it's obviously generated a lot of concerns and discussion. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah I I well, there was people before you were here, so. I thought there were some questions. No, I just had a, a small point. Well, okay, so you are asking Ryan and Paul for that. If, if, if you want to continue with your questions, but I do think it's a good idea to put on the web program more than Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Mine's a specific question in relation to uh, paragraph 7.1, when it talks about financial savings having been achieved, and also goes on to an overall reduction in staff. Have you got any figures to, to, to highlight those issues, please? I can certainly bring the figures along. Okay, so yeah, thank you. It, it, just a quick point, and they uh, don't even need to respond, but uh, I'm not sure I'm the only uh, councillor who, who actually has an iPad and no other council equipment, and you can't access the uh, council internet via the council website. So currently, I, I have no access to the council internet, and I raised this with numerous people, so and nothing's happened, so another person might help me. I'll we'll go back to the team. Yeah, we can take that back to Okay, thank you. Adam? Just a remark, Chair. I think one of the key Savings, not just not not necessarily staff, but just in actually time spent 
on the air, which is things like freedom of information. I think the other key point is also as Steve highlighted, I had a resident come to me this week who's tried to um, highlight a tree in their road street scene. They couldn't, didn't have a computer. Yeah. Yeah. They were told to go to the library, which they didn't have to go The one that's closest to them was going to open 18 hours a week, so they could, there wasn't anyone there. But the very elderly, the person, and in the end, they went to the leader of the council, actually, is the way they've taken it. It's obviously not efficient, so there does need to be other avenues as well, yeah. even if it's a much reduced service. Okay, Leah? Yeah. Chair, um, my question was actually what uh, Adam just said. What about the person that can't, uh, isn't online, that can't get to the library, that has a, an issue, or perhaps somebody that's got an emergency? Um, they're in the town hall. What would happen then? You can still, the call centre will still be in operation. still in operation. Right. For how long? Uh, I have no, no knowledge that it's not going to be around. Um, Malcolm's here and. <laughs> Transaction Centre Manager, so uh, they might be able to help, help them, but uh, the call centre is still there to respond to people who cannot access online. The one-stop shops are still there, um, drop-in service at the one here and the one at Conway, um, and an appointment system for those people who can't access services online. So if they can't do any of that, they can ring up and get still a result. Yeah. Well, I think that's an hour and a half. Okay, well, I think um, okay. we'll put this on our work program. It's obviously an issue of real concern. It's a lot of discussion, but I think we've been out. <laughs> we can let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, 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 I think we're going to move on. I think we're going to move on. I think we're going to move on. I think the recommendation is that we can just go to our work program. Please, I'm back. Thank you. Um, from the, the wealth of research that's out there, 
we must ensure that there are support initiatives to assist employees to stay in work. We're also that our attendance management policy is fit for purpose and allows plan management action to address concerns and levels of absence both informally and formally and appropriate. We've undertaken a range of measures for the past couple of years to manage absence in the workplace. And I've set those out on page 26 of the report. As you can see, it includes training, occupational health contract, and employee assistance program. Enhancing the management information available to managers about levels of absence in their teams. Case management, um, seeking to get long term action, action plans into long term cases from a HR support perspective. And also, chief officer briefings where our chief officers met with line managers in July to set out the expectations in terms of management absence. And we have another number of initiatives and progress to manage absence, refreshing training, development of health and wellbeing strategy, and also a couple of changes to the council's policy, which is the subject of this report. As with most large organisations, we have a policy and procedure in place to manage absence in the workplace, and under the policy and procedure, managers are required to record absence, maintain contact with employees during absence, make referrals to OH uh, as required, hold a back to work meeting with employees, advise employees informally if their attendance is a concern, and take formal action where appropriate. As with most policies, um, our, our, our own policy has a series of absence triggers which may result in formal action being taken. Following the review of those triggers, we recommend a number of changes. And the key changes are, firstly, a policy requirement that employees are referred to occupational health immediately, i.e. day one, for stress-related absence. This is probably practice, but it's not a policy requirement. And adoption of the following triggers in relation to short-term absence. I've set the figures out in the report. Um, I must apologise to the committee, there is an error in that paragraph. Um, and for the avoidance of any doubt, the appendix 1B on page 33 of those figures. Apologies for that. The changes that we recommend um, to the first stages of absence, and this is largely around short term persistent absence, is to specify a number of days rather than just occasions of absence. Our view is that we strengthen the operation of the policy and add some clarity to the existing arrangements. It remains a fundamental principle of managing absence that employees may be aware informally that their attendance is a concern before formal action is taken, and the policy retains that principle. In developing the attendance management policy, feedback has been received from managers across the council to identify how policy and practice may be improved, and we've also reviewed triggers in place in other organisations. There's almost an inference. Um, variety of options you could take with this really in every organisation has their own position on it. Our trade unions were formally consulted on the revised policy. Unison was not agreed to propose changes. United and GMP did not respond to consultation. I'm happy to take any questions, Chair. Max and John. Max and John, this one. Go on. Yeah. One more. You need us to mind. There we go. Um, thank you for your report. Then. Um, a few, few questions for you, if I may. Um, some of the uh, information gathered around uh, attendance was interesting. <coughs> have we got a breakdown? Is it all employees, but have we got a breakdown by department? Um, yes. Um, the management information we've got on absence is quite well developed. Um, obviously, it's all recorded in the system. So we can um, break it down in almost any which way, really, um, by team, by department, by directors. Um, so we have a breakdown monthly or quarterly um, by, by different departments in the council. And is there, did you spot any trends through that? Because I would I mean, imagine speaking to the staff here that if you're in an advocacy position or maybe if you're on the front line of social services, more as a stressful job, higher, higher absence. Yeah. Is there anything, uh, have, have we spotted trends and, and what have we done to sort of accommodate that thinking in our policy? Okay, um, yes, there are trends. Um, you're right to identify that with. Um, level frontline social work and um, certainly there uh, is historically high levels of sickness absence. Um, that's not just a particular rural issue, that's a national issue. Um, so there is a quite a variation across the department. So for this directorate you more around kind of eight and a half to nine days. Um, whereas in adults and children as you can see um, some teams are around kind of fifteen to sixteen days per uh, in terms of what we've done um, the report sets out some of the initiatives we take in terms of trying to um, keep people from going off sick in terms of managing stress and, and training that we've done. 
and I think we need to do more in terms of working with groups that we've identified as being essential areas of stress and looking to put more proactive support in. Um, I think we're, we've done quite a lot of work about getting them back to work as quickly as possible. That's in terms of getting them going off in the first place. I think we need to revisit some of our kind of strategies around that. Because it seems that, uh, well, continue, it's because it seems that we've got some, I mean, I've got a few points or questions about the actual proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we've got some good um, training which seems to have happened, but it'd be nice to know if there was something specifically about saying, you know, if someone's been in a quite stressful position for a number of weeks, how we pull them off the front line and, and prevent that turning into a, well, I can't keep doing this. So I'd be, I'd be interested to hear that. Um, in, with reference to the actual proposals that have come forward, um, I know there are, there are triggers that are set forward now. I'd personally look to be um, look to see some specific exemptions in there uh, around um, bereavement, um, if you're a single parent family, um, the childcare consent. I, I think I'd like to see there be uh, some dispensation for that, um, and I, it just feels quite um, quite draconian in that in that the current policy there is a review period. We don't go straight into a warning, um, and that I would hope that there's something for the management discretion, whereas this one straight to a verbal warning. And I just think, what's the soft approach there? Is that, is that, what, what's the thinking behind going straight on the top? Okay, um, that's not the case. Um, but I'm not, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the approach that we will take is, um, in terms of changing the triggers, obviously we put forward some, some changes as you can see. We would retain an informal stage to the process. It's just not a review period. So, to give an example, if somebody has been off a couple of times within a period of time, the requirements on the manager will still be to advise the person informally that should there be a further absence within the next three months or two months or whatever it might be, then they may be subject to formal action. This is not an automatic. So the line manager retains the discretion to apply the policy as they see appropriate. Could that be included? I, unless I missed that, that wasn't in this the proposed document, yeah. that's not there. Could, could okay. we include that? Because I'd like for that safeguarding to be there, and I think that would then be sensible. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, at the moment, the current, the current policy site like, has a review period, which is a specific, we've reached the triggers and now there's a fair period. Yeah. Um, upon reflection, that's not working for us in terms of it just stretches out the period of time. But we absolutely get tied to the principle of someone who will be advised first that their absence is a concern and next time. I'll make sure that it's That's the point why I'd be, I'd be content. Um, yeah. and my, my final question was really around what positive steps are we looking, what, what incentives are we looking to introduce to improve attendance? I mean, for instance, I mean, like promotions, are we linking that to positive attendance? Good. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of research kind of out there around employee incentive schemes, um, and also given our financial position, we're limited probably in what we can do. There's a strong argument from many kind of areas that we should not reward attendance because it's part of contract employment and actually um, there's a view there that we're already being paid for coming to work. So two sides to the same argument. Yeah. There, there are things about offering holiday if you have a perfect attendance or yeah. limiting promotions to people that actually have a decent enough attendance because if, if someone can't be bothered to turn up and then has to enforce an attendance policy, it kind of makes a mockery of it. So yeah. I'd, I'd like to know what we considered around those things. Okay. We have got that. Yeah, I love that. And there's some things that we can do which are lower value but perhaps still as rewarding in terms of thank you letters and that's acknowledging where someone's yeah. had the attendance is something that we're promoting as well. Thanks. Um, John? Okay, my just is a small one. Um, this policy, does this go right across the whole board of everyone, including senior management? Yes. Because okay. I'd like to know why one, when one went off hill with stress and she well, got paid. That could be answered in the why not? That's what I'm here for. Um, and ends up with a, a large amount of money. Does that, does that include the old, old new people that uh, work for Woodbrook Council? What's the incentive? Okay, obviously I can't comment on an individual. No, not individual. Yeah. Okay, Chris. Okay, my question is, um, with regards to all the how important do you think management appraisals are for staff in regard to relation to that? Um, so, uh, performance? Yeah, I think um, obviously there's, there's very some issues around performance appraisal and um, no doubt we'll come to it. Um, I think in terms of any studies around absence, they will show that um, teams with good management have good levels of attendance. Um, 
that's not, you know, that you know, it can be a generalisation. Um, but generally, when we've got good managers who are managing attendance well, managing other aspects of work life, then um, you know, I think a, a better level of attendance would support that. And I think doing a, a performance appraisal is a part of that you know, management expectation. How would we do with the appraisals for staff? Are we on time for that? We have some things that we can update. I think it's oh, in the area too far. Well, I, I know, I, I've been meeting in the, in the press. I mean, this report has gone out in advance. Um, I think we've been fairly slated for the reports. However, as I bet, if you look at it in comparison with other authorities, if, you know, there is some hopes there. I think there is, um, I think we have a duty as a scrutiny committee to ensure that our officers have all the available tools available. I think this is what this policy and the tweaks to the policy are designed to do, to give our, our managers uh, the ability to improve the performance without being the company and without you know, uh, being a, a, a ruthless and bad employer. I know we're working in the private sector and looking at our uh, policies, absence management policies, we're not vastly different, I can assure you of that, not vastly different than, than those in, in, in the private sector. And I believe I work for a reasonable employer, I think we are a reasonable employer. Also, you know, we do expect our staff to turn off and, and work, but it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? Because as the cuts come in, inevitably the departments that people work in, there's, there's less staff there, and then there is that overwhelming uh, thing within public service. People want to serve and want to make up for the shortfall. It happens in lots of teams in team culture where the numbers go down, but you want to keep the same output going. And that in itself creates, does create some problems. And then another one goes off and the problem gets even worse. So it is, a, it is you know, and I would, I'd love someone to do some research and see what the absence levels are like compared to the levels of cuts that individual authorities have had. And I would be pretty sure it would be a fairly direct recognition that the, the harder the cuts come from an authority, the more difficult sickness management becomes. So all in all, there is some positivities there. I also believe, and it's been used a lot in, in my company, where it's someone is able to, rather than being in sick, work from home. Uh, quite often, some people, full of cold or flu, go in and send another six other people on sick. If it's an ability to work from home and the technology we've received some of the improvements, that might be a, 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 an option to reduce sickness levels. So I think we just need to be give, give our, our managers the training and the tools to, to cope with this situation. And, and just keep keep working at it because the, the situation is a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just one as well, Steve. The um, scheme puts a lot of um, emphasis on the line manager being able to deal with a lot of situations. And I've looked at the list of training. And first question is, what specific training do the line managers have? Because it's very difficult, isn't it, in a number of illnesses, you may present with always having indigestion and bad stomachs, which is actually stress. How much are they actually trained in what to look for? And also, who oversees the stress levels then of the managers who are having to make decisions which may well be unpopular amongst the remaining staff who are feeling under pressure because other people have gone? Thank you, um, there has been some specific training around line managers through e-learning and also um, they are able to get support from HR in any particular cases that they're dealing with which they may find complex. Um, we have plans, as I mentioned in the report, to do more to refresh that training and to do some specific training with line managers where they're um, managing areas of particularly high stress teams. So you question areas of social work teams and put some specific reporting in there. Um, and actually that will be training that goes all the way you know, to the top of the structure. So in terms of managing your own stress and managing the stress of others and recognising the symptoms of stress in others, um, that's probably the next piece of dedicated work we need to do. And our intention is to target that around specific areas around um, children's services and adult services where our levels are high. Could I have a supplementary? Could I ask Chair for you if we could have sight of that training? Um, Whatever in however form it's presented, to be a, a paper copy or a, a, an e-copy that we could look at, so we have an idea what it is that line managers do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
rely on it. It's still below the target anticipated, but it is going in the right direction. And since the, the last couple of months, we spent the resources and the procurement team as well. That's what takes us further forward.